guys, one of the easiest ways to make some extra money is to start an online business. But the thing is though, not all online businesses are made equally. Nah. Some are actually pretty hard to start and hard to actually carry on running. But some ideas are much easier to start and much easier to carry on running, even as a side hustle. Today I'm gonna to speak to you guys about five of the easiest online business ideas to start this year. What I wanna do with today's video is be super practical. I'm gonna share with you guys why exactly is this an easy idea to start? And secondly, how exactly can you go about starting it? If you wanted to go about starting these ideas today. Now you can take everything I've shared on today's video as expected and head off and actually start these ideas yourself. That's the whole point. If however, at some point you feel to yourself, I can barely make any money from this thing or I need a community of people who are also doing a similar thing or I need some help making this a success, I'd love to refer you to our sister brand over at Financial Joy Academy where we are doing these ourselves, okay? I'll link to it below and above you to head over and check it out. Now before sharing the five ideas, I want to share a bit about our mindset because mindset is actually pretty important. For a lot of people, the whole idea of an online business or a side hustle is very, very far away. It's very remote from their everyday reality. And the reason for that is because a lot of people watch videos online and simply consume the ideas but don't actually put what they're learning into action. So for me, thinking about this as someone who was one in this place, one thing I'd say is that for you to actually start an online business as a side hustle or as a business by itself, you first of all have to see yourself actually doing it. And the way you see yourself doing it is to have answers to some specific questions. Things like, what am I going to be doing day to day if I run my online business? Would I run it from my phone or would I run it from a computer, for example? What could a day in their life look like for me if I have a corporate job and also have to run this thing on the side? How much time exactly have I got to put towards a side hustle online? And how much do I want to make from that particular thing? It's a bit like you buying a house. You might have a dream right now of owning your own home. And you think about it, it's not until you actually start to go online and start to view some properties and book some appointments and actually show up and see those properties. It's not until you do that, that the idea of home ownership starts to become real. In the same way, it's not until you start to actually have those answers that the idea of earning your own online business or side hustle that actually makes you money starts to become a reality. Now, with a mindset out the way, let's look at these five ideas. If you're enjoying today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. That helps what we're doing continue to grow and have more impact and reach many more people. All right, so my first easy idea is coaching. Now, you probably hear that word and say, nah, Ken. Coaching, that is so saturated. So many people are doing coaching. Why should I do it? Let me tell you, there are people out there right now making more money from coaching on a monthly basis than you probably make on an annual basis from your day job. That's right. There are people doing it right now. We've even interviewed people on this channel who are making that much money from coaching. Now, with coaching, you can make money from individual coaching, which is how people start on a one-to-one -one basis, or you can make money from a one-to-many basis, like a small group coaching program that you create. Now, why on earth is this an easy idea to start? The first is that you don't need a qualification to offer coaching, even though it would be nice if you had one, because it gives you some supposed legitimacy. But that legitimacy can come in different ways, from your experience or from the result you might have helped other people achieve. People might have approached you for coaching on the side. You might have helped them to solve a problem. That offers you you that legitimacy as well. The second reason this is easy to start is that you don't need an existing audience to begin. You can begin with a word of mouth strategy, talk to people about what you have to offer. You might post about it on say LinkedIn, through articles that you write about or some thought leadership pieces you, you write about and people might approach you for coaching. Or you might even use your existing networks as a way to get the word out. And the third reason is that you can use it using your existing skills. You don't have to go and learn anything new to start offering coaching services as a way to make some extra money. Now you might be thinking, how do I start Ken? The very first thing I say is to decide on what problem you're gonna help people to solve using your existing skills. Look around at what other people are offering in an area that you have an interest or expertise in. I'll use me as an example. I offer coaching in two areas. First, I offer financial coaching. I help people create a personalized plan for their financial freedom. That's unique and it's very clear why I offer that. Secondly, I offer business coaching. I help people create membership businesses that create it creates recurring income for themselves monthly and I help them to then invest that money tax efficiently. But notice with those two areas I just mentioned, they are areas I have expertise in, but what I've done is made them 
super specific. That way I create what's known as a blue ocean. A blue ocean essentially is an area that you operate in that has few competition because you've brought certain elements together to create a very unique offering. So in my case, in the last example I mentioned, I brought together our expertise in running membership businesses with our expertise in investing and wealth building to create something very unique. What can you bring together in your existing expertise to create something unique and offer a specific type of person in order to generate some extra income. The second step will be to decide on what exactly are you going to charge depending on what result you're going to help people to achieve. If the result you're going to help people to achieve is quite small, then you charge something fairly small. If you're going to achieve quite a big result, like for example, you're going to help somebody make a lot more money or save a lot more money or save a lot more time, then you're more likely to charge a much higher price. And then the third thing I do to start is to create a simple website. A three page website would do an about us page, a home page, as well as a services page that lists the list of your services and then have a section for people to contact you and reach out to you if they needed to. And the next thing you need to do is to start to market your services because without marketing, however great your services are, nobody will pay you for it. Number two is a bit of a wild card. It's to become an influencer. Now, I can hear you already going, what? Now, I actually hate that word influencer and I used to rebel against that word a little bit. But the thing I've realized is that every single one of us, even you, have a level of influence day to day. Whether you're somebody in the public eye or in the private eye or I don't know, whatever, in between, you as somebody with considerable influence day to day. Could be in your workplace, your home, with your children, with your spouse, you know, what have you. You have a level of influence and the more you embrace that influence, the better. However, what I'm talking about here when it comes to influencing is to build a community around a particular topic. So you see, on the internet, you probably follow a bunch of people on Instagram. You might even follow us on Instagram. In fact, I'll put up our Instagram for you to head over and check out the way we create content for you to understand what I'm talking about here. And hey, follow whilst you're there. <laughs> <laughs> just had to get that one in. But my point is, when it comes to creating content around a particular topic, it's very important to understand that you actually acquire a very powerful skill if you're someone who's actually able to control traffic in a way, control the attention that people have, okay? In a good way, okay? So what I'm talking about here is, over time, if you're able to create content around a particular topic, in our case, we do personal finance, you know, wealth building, entrepreneurship, that sort of stuff. Yours might be that you're into like parenting or traveling or vegan food, or even like you might offer legal services, what have you, but you are focusing and talking about specific things in that niche. What happens over time if you do it consistently is that you build an audience. And as you build that audience and your audience grows, you attract the people who pay you. Sponsorships, corporates, people who wanna partner with you and you earn some pretty significant amounts of money from doing that. In fact, some people have done this to the extent that it's become their full-time job. And you don't obviously have to do that. It could just become something you do on the side. Now, I might hear you, I can, I can even hear you right now going, Ken, I do not wanna put myself out there. I know, that used to be me. However, you can even do this anonymously. And I'll be coming to a bit of that later on in this video. But you can post things online and you don't have to show your face all the time. The key though, is to make sure you're creating quality content. Now, why is this easy to start? Number one, you can do this in your spare time. Number two, anyone can do it. And as I said before, you don't have to show your face. And number three, you already consume content. Come on, yeah? So. All you now need to do is to turn that on the other way and you realize what good content looks like because you probably consume good content. Why not create that good content and benefit from it? Now, you're probably saying, Ken, how do I start? Thought you wouldn't ask. First thing you, you need to do is to decide on what you want to be known for. What topic? So in our case, as I mentioned before, it's personal finance, helping people become financially independent. That's, our, that's the area. What is yours? The second thing is to decide on one platform you want to operate on. Notice I said one because there are many platforms and it's easy to want to jump around and try all these platforms or choose one. It could be Instagram, highly recommended. It could be YouTube with, you know, long form content or YouTube shorts, highly recommended because, you, you know, that's being monetized. It could be that you choose to go to somewhere else like LinkedIn, highly recommended. Or you might choose to go to TikTok. I've tried it. It's kind of okay, but Again, it's a big platform for some people. Again, highly recommended because a lot of people are using that platform. So you can choose any of these platforms, but choose one to start. Next thing I'd say is to post two or three times a week consistently. You need what's known as a content plan. So for example, I'm gonna post Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. That's your plan. And you need a format for which you are posting. 
Don't miss it. Do it consistently for six to 12 months and you will see yourself generating quite significant amounts of money. Again, remember, you have to be posting consistently and posting with the primary reason of helping people achieve a particular outcome. In addition to posting content periodically, I'd recommend creating what's known as a media kit. It's essentially a document, a PDF that tells people, you know, organizations, companies, sponsors, what you charge for your various posts and services. I'm gonna pop up on the screen a bit of a snapshot from our media kit for you to get a bit of a sense for what I'm talking about. But remember what I said from the start, don't let the fear of, I don't wanna put myself out there, hold you back. Okay, find a way to do it, enjoy doing it, do it from a creative perspective, and above all, do it to help people on a journey. All right, idea number three is to create niche online courses, okay? Now, in our sister brand, Financial Joy Academy, we, we looked at a case study as part of our 5 a.m. club on Mondays. We looked at a case study of a young lady who made $300,000 in one year from one online course talking about her experience of becoming a beginner investor. And she shared about it and taught other people how to do it. And she made 300K, a course for $500 sold to 600 people. Now, wouldn't you like that kind of money? Of course you would. Now, you don't have to make that kind of money, obviously. But the point remains, online courses are a really lucrative way to use your existing skill set and expertise to generate some extra money on an ongoing basis. Now, why is this an easy online business to start? Number one, there's the availability of smartphones. I've got one, you probably have one too. Number two is that there are platforms that are easily available for use to host your online courses. For example, your Teachables, your Thinkific, your WordPresses, all these are platforms you can host a course on. Number three, there are platforms that you can sell your online courses on to generate some money. Because you might say to yourself, I don't have any audience. How am I gonna sell my courses? You have your Skillshare, your Udemy's and so on, or even your own website, because then you get to keep most of the money that you make from your online courses. Now, how exactly do you start creating an online course? The first thing I'd say is to teach what you already know, provided it's in demand. So for example, we have a course called Super Simple Investing, which we created to help beginner investors gain investing confidence in only 12 days. We created it because, number one, it was knowledge we had, i.e. investing. Number two, there was a demand from beginner investors who wanted to learn how to invest their money. Together with the knowledge and expertise and the demand, we created something that people wanted. So you need to teach something that you know that people are interested in. Step two, I'd say, is that you need to then outline and film your course. We'd suggest using Google Docs, it's free, as a way to outline your course. Think of it like you're outlining chapters in a book. Aim for between six and 12 areas or chapters that you might want to create content on. And then you want to head off and begin to film. Use your smartphone, make sure you've got a good microphone, make sure you've got decent lighting, like natural lighting or some of the lighting that I've got here that I'm using to film this particular video right now. And then the third step is choose how you're gonna market the course. The course is not gonna market itself. So you can choose an existing marketplace like I mentioned, your Skillshares, your Udemy's and so on, or you can choose to market this course by yourself on your own platform or a combination of both. Now I should mention that when you market on those other platforms, having a bit of an audience or being known in some capacity always helps you, gives you a bit of an edge, a bit of an advantage. But that should not put you off because you've got to start somewhere and without starting somewhere, there's no way you get known. Like for example, doing what we do, what we do with the Humble Penny, at some point, no one knew who we were. But today, you know, people can search the name The Humble Penny and we come up somewhere online. But we had to start somewhere in the first place. My third idea is virtual assisting. The thing is, a lot of people who start online businesses need a lot of help. And they could even be people who run offline businesses. Essentially, people who are in business need help. And that help is available thanks to freelancing, thanks to you know the likes of virtual assistants who can offer that help and get paid as a result. And this is a big opportunity for somebody who maybe wants to acquire some digital skills or who maybe just wants to earn some money online in a really reliable way. That could be you. You could actually start that way and that could then lead to other things. Like you might become such a good virtual assistant and you might then move on to maybe create a virtual assistance agency where you hire other people to do the work. Or you might even move on to create a course or a program teaching other people how to become virtual assistants. My point is, is you've got to start somewhere and then gradually learn and dig a bit deeper and then use your learning to create more opportunities because no 
learning is ever wasted. If I've learned anything when it comes to running an online business or operating online, it's that everything you learn can then be used as an opportunity to create other opportunities. Whether it's you're creating a course, you're creating a program, whether you're creating a workshop, all of it is based on things that you are acquiring. But without doing, you will never acquire that knowledge to then create that particular outcome. Now, the types of responsibilities that a VA has include email management, admin tasks, creating presentations, managing a community, providing customer service, helping with email marketing, and so on. Now, obviously, all those things will depend on the type of person to which you're doing their virtual assistant for. Now, why is this an easy type of online business to start? The first is that you are likely somebody who already has the skills that a virtual assistant uses day to day, because you probably already use those skills in your corporate job right now. The second reason is that you can actually apply to become a virtual assistant whilst then learning the bits you need to become an effective VA over time. So you don't need to wait to become amazing. You can start right now and then build as you go. Then the third reason this is easy is that you can do it from anywhere in the world. You don't need to be a young person. You, you know, you could be in your 50s. You could even be older than that to become a VA or younger or whatever. The point is anyone from anywhere in the world can become a virtual assistant and serve people from different parts of the world. Now, how do you start? The first thing I do is to look up a typical job description of a virtual assistant. Kind of look it up and make sure you are happy with the kinds of things that you're gonna be doing to earn that extra money. Second thing is to decide on how much time you've got to commit to being a virtual assistant consistently. Okay, and would that be enough to kind of generate the sort of income you want to make on a regular basis? And the third thing I'd do is to then check out freelance websites, you know, head over to the likes of Upwork, for example, place an ad over there, you know, and offer your services as a virtual assistant. Also reach out to people that you might follow online. You know, I've had people reach out to me online via email saying, hey, I've got, you know, I'm a virtual assistant, blah, blah, blah. You know, reach out to other people. Don't like bombard my, <laughs> don't like bombard my inbox with like lots of emails. Nah, don't do that. You know, reach out to various people that you you know you follow online and ask them because a lot of those people actually need help but don't know where to get the help from and also you know ask within your networks and so on tell people you're starting to offer virtual assistance services and people will let you know where the opportunities arise and number five is to start a blog and newsletter combo now let me unpack this now you will know you will have heard or you will know that newsletters are actually have become a lot more popular you'll probably sign up to a bunch of newsletters but they're also very lucrative machines when it comes to running an online business some people start newsletters and that's what they do they just run a newsletter however I would actually do it a bit differently I'd start a blog and and a newsletter because they are amazing complements to each other. They work phenomenally well together. But the reason why I pair the newsletter with the blog is number one, the blogging will help you become better at writing. If you're like me and you started off this whole online business thing or you're looking to start, I was actually terrible at writing anything. But blogging regularly helped me become better at writing, which meant that I became better at doing my newsletter thing. The second reason why the pair is a good combination is when you have a blog, it also provides an environment environment for you to grow your newsletter on. Then the third reason why that combo works really well is that a blog helps to really diversify the income that you might generate from your newsletter. So for example, where in your newsletter you might be generating, selling some digital products and things, you might generate some affiliates, a blog takes that to a whole new level. You might have some ad revenue, you might have some sponsorships and what have you. You might then sell more of your own digital products as well. Effectively, it's like creating two separate plat platforms that work beautifully well together. Now, why is this an easy online business to start? Number one, there are guides online to help you. I've written a, a really amazing guide for how to start a blog and a newsletter and stuff like that. I'll link to it below and above for you to head over and check out. Number two is that it's cheap. Woo! Super cheap, cheaper than a takeaway to actually start. You need a website, domain. If you wanna start a blog, you need some cheap hosting, that sort of stuff. Get anyone you want, but I'll link to the one we use below, as well as above you to head over and get your free website name and cheap domain. But also check out that step-by-step -step guide I mentioned previously. The third reason it's easy to start is that you can start it alongside your day job. And you're not even having to worry about, I don't wanna put myself out there. You just get on with it, stay consistent, and you find yourself generating some good income in a few 
months time. So how exactly do you start? So step one, read that guide I mentioned previously like a minute ago. Don't forget to read it again, I'll link to it below and above. Step two, you need an email marketing software. We use one called ConvertKit, it's amazing. Like I can't say good, good enough things about it. There are many others that you can use, but I, I mentioned the one I use because I use it. I'll link to it below and above for you to head over and check out. Now I should mention, whenever I say to you, check out some links, some of them we get paid for to get full transparency, just to let you know, you know, you see it doesn't cost you any more to use it, but feel free to use those links as well. And the third thing you can do to actually get your newsletter going, to create something of value that you give to people. Yeah, so for example, think of it as an exchange. For someone to join your newsletter and learn more from you, even though you're gonna be creating amazing things, it really helps to give them something upfront, something of really of great value. It could be a downloadable, could be a PDF, could be a planner, could be just, a, you know, a calculator, could be anything, but something relevant to your niche and relevant to what you're going to be talking about on your newsletter. All right, in conclusion, starting an online business really begins in the mind. You have to believe that this is something that is available to you and not to other people on the internet and open up your mind to some ideas, okay? I've given you five on this video. There are many others I could have talked about. Please pick one. Give it a chance. Give it a few months. Run with it. Put the work in consistently and I can pretty much guarantee that you will get the results. Now, remember what I said at the start. If you need a community of people, if you want to work with Ken and Mary, if you want to hang out with us in our 5 a.m. club, if you want to learn from us and how we do our things behind the scenes, all those things, hey, hang out with us over at Financial Joy Academy. Again, I'll link to it below and above. You know, come in there and see, learn the necessary tools, learn the things you need to make your online business and side hustle a roaring success. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you really enjoyed it, I really appreciate it. Like I said, hit that like and that subscribe. Come on, show some love for the work that goes into our channel. I'd love to hear from you in the comments, actually. Which of those five online business ideas are you actually going to explore? Please jump in the comments and let us know. But other than that, thank you so much again for watching. And as always, people, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care and bye for now.